What is up, everybody? This is Keith Jameson, Go by Gator Guy 231 across the DFS industry, and we are back for more EPL. And I think this is like the biggest EPL slate we have had in quite some time. Six games. I was actually like really weird putting together the list for the the graphic just to have so many choices and then have to narrow it down to 10 is tough. So there's gonna be plenty of guys that I'm strongly considering for cash and optimal builds that just can't make the list. So I'm gonna give you my top um, ones to look through. Um, with six games, you know, just a quick bit of strategy. For GPPs, GPPs are crazy, right? You gotta get your goals. You gotta get the huge upside guys, but in cash, optimal, single entry, head to head, all of those type of builds, I really enjoy having bigger games because when people take risks in cash or play suboptimally and they play a goal getter that doesn't get there and we can just get back there with floors or with, you know, guys in better spots, it puts us away ahead of them. So there's more margin for error in bigger slates, in my opinion, um, in both respects, right? And margin for error meaning our opponents have more chances to screw up and we have more chances to in a way, not screw up, but like if our guys don't quite get where we want to, right? On a two game slate, if somebody puts up 20 DK, you have to have them or you're screwed. On a, on a bigger slate, as ownership spreads out, you know, not having a 20 guy, but let's say that the, the 1v1 you had, it was either him or the other, your guy got 13. Well, again, because our opponents are going to make so many mistakes, we have a chance to make up for it. So just a quick tidbit, focus on, you know, your process, you know, if you kind of follow mine, which is floor set pieces. I think you should be in for a good week. Quick reminder, like, subscribe, comment on this video. You're going to find more of my content at GatorGuy231 on Twitter, FSI on YouTube. And then um, just, you know, shout out to the Mayo Media Network, as always, for letting me be a part of the content. Make sure you subscribe so you get all the amazing stuff they're putting out. And also check out the pod feed, Daily Fantasy Picks and Bets, the mix for even more action. All right, let's get right to it because we have a lot to go over. We've got six games, the biggest favorite, and I think the most important team and how you're going to handle them is Liverpool minus 750 at home to Norwich. Um, Liverpool play in the midweek. We could, could see some rotation. We will talk about that here in a minute. Arsenal minus 215 is the second biggest favorite at home to Brentford. They owe a little revenge for the opening season loss at Brentford. Villa comes in next, minus 154, home to Watford. Chelsea, same type of favorite, minus 154, away to Palace. Um, Brighton, minus 150, home to Burnley. And then our only non-minus favorite, pretty square game, Southampton, plus 110, home to Everton. So let's just start start at the top, Mo Salah at 10-2. Um, I just personally think it's a lock and load. There are a ton of ways you can go at forward. Mo Salah does not give us sets, does not. Um, you know, provide a ton of crosses. But what he does do is goal and assist upside. Liverpool is a minus 750 favorite with the juice on the over three and a quarter means there's going to be goals. Norwich is very, very out man in this game, especially at Anfield. Um, I think that one of your forward spots has to be um, a Liverpool player, whether it's going to be Salah or Mane or potentially even both. Um, I think Salah is going to be the chalk. I think he is the one guy on this ceiling that if, or I'm sorry, on this slate, that has a ceiling of 30 plus. Like if you go to me, who gets 30? There's one player that gets 30. Like the immediate snap response is the law. So it probably means you should play him, especially with a ton of value on here. I think it's easy to get there. Um, 10-2, you know, given his form maybe is, an even, is even a little bit light. So most I'll cover this uh, video and a lock in my lineups. Uh, Bikoyo Osaka, 9,900, only 300 off of Salah, a lot more floor before last game's dud at Wolves. Seven straight games with double digits. That Wolves game had a red card as well, so a little bit more that was going in there, but seven straight double digits games. Saka does give you goal upside, gives you assist upside, and gives you floor. To me, he's my second favorite forward on the entire slate. Just the question becomes at that point, can you afford it, right? Because now all of a sudden, if I'm plugging Salah, I'm taking Saka, that's almost 20K spent or over 20K spent. And I only, I still have six more positions to go, but just know Saka is, is an elite level play. Trent Alexander-Arnold, normally a lock. I actually think that Trent Alexander-Arnold is one of the decision points on the slate. And this may be contrarian. Trent Alexander-Arnold this year, nobody has much as big of a floor as Trent Alexander-Arnold, really in all the EPL, maybe De Bruyne. Um, I'm probably James Ward-Prowse, probably like those three are your top floor guys, you know, 
go to Rotowire and you can probably sort by floor and see if I'm wrong, but I'm just going off the head. But double digits in 1214, but two of those does in the last three games. Now, I think he, this is a definite rebound spot for him and for Liverpool. The thing and the reason why he's a decision point is twofold. One, he is almost 1,500 more. He is almost. He is 1,500 more than Andy Robertson at 7,700, who for about the last 10 games is neck and neck. So I can save 1,500 going to Andy Robertson. You go, okay, well, just play both the Liverpool defenders. That's what we normally do on Liverpool sites. Well, we got guys like Lucas Dean on this list we'll be talking about, 6,200. So 3,000 off Toronto's and Arnold. Good spot, set split, good floor. We got Kieran Tierney. Similar type of thing. No sets, but really good for 5,900. Then we've got Kiko Familia, 4,500. We have Terry Glancy. We have a ton of other defenders I haven't even mentioned. All in good spots. All that's significantly less than Trent Alexander Arnold. So it's less, do I love Trent? Because of course I love Trent. Like, who doesn't? Especially for DFS. But it's more of the opportunity cost. That defender has so many options below Trent Alexander Arnold. Should we actually save money? right? Not use Trent. Plug in the other defenders and then spend up at other positions that have a little bit more scarcity. That's kind of what I'm seeing right now. Feel free to comment if you think I'm an absolute idiot for con the consideration. But right now I'm thinking that a, a fate of Trent is on our own strong. But I can also just say this. If you were just going, look, Trent is in my lineup, lock and load, cannot blame you. Next player, James Ward Prowse, 8,700. Um, what does James Ward Prowse do? Gets DraftKings points. Like, that is what he is on this, like, that's what he is in the league for, it seems. You know, crosses, thousand drop tackles, PKs, free kick goals, like everything you could possibly want. The argument with Trent, or I'm sorry, with James Ward Prowse is he's 500 away from Trent, different positions, of course, but if you just go in utility, 500 away from Trent, and Trent is seven times the favorite of James Ward Prowse, right? So that's where it gets difficult. Sadio Mane, 8,400, I really like that as the second forward. I don't think it's crazy at all to go ahead and actually do both Liverpool forwards. I think forward is a position where you look up and down at that it is not loaded. Like we have guys like Pascal Gross, who I want to love, but he's been splitting with McAllister, subbing out early. Um, I think Ishmael Asar is interesting, but he's an away dog. Um, I think even Milo Rashika uh, is interesting. we got the Arsenal guys, talked about Saka. But I think Asadi Amani, 8,400, is showing a decent amount of forward. Look through his logs. You have a lot of six, seven, eight, and nine DraftKings without a goal, without an assist. At this point, I don't ever like to say somebody's overdue, but Sadio Mane is kind of overdue for a goal. Had an okay AFCON. Um, his team won won the title, right? Sadio Mane got a few PKs, did get some on the goals, but Mane's got to score. Um, I think this is really, really a get right spot for um, him versus Norwich, who he should get a number of opportunities with. And if we do get a goal or assist from Mane, we're probably looking at 20 DK, which at 8,400. Smash. Andy Robertson, 7,700. I kind of already talked about the trainers in Arnold. I prefer him to Trent with the savings, but I will also just mention this could be a spot where we see Tismika um, rotate in for Andy Robertson. That's even more of a savings. He'll split sets. Would love either one of them. Lucas Dean, 6,200. I think it's just considering the price of trainers in Arnold is actually a steal. If I just put them one and one, uh, Lucas Dean is taking splitting half the sets for Goa is very, very active. Villa is in a very plus matchup here, minus 154 to a Watford team that will sit back, accept pressure. So 6,200 for Dean, I like quite a bit. Kieran Tierney, um, probably my favorite non-set taking defender. And look, he just gets DraftKings points. Arsenal is a big favorite here at home to Brentford at minus 215. Tierney just bombs up that left flank. You know, he's good for, I think even without the clean sheet, he's looking at potentially 10 DK when, and when you Look at 5,900. That's quite quite a nice savings. Kiko Firmino is one of my favorite values on the entire state, 4,500. He's been taking Monopoly set pieces for Watford. Um, now, it's not the greatest matchup ever, right? Watford's almost plus 400 away to Villa. Villa does concede DraftKings points. We've seen Firmino even in games that you didn't expect him to do that well. Since getting sets, still putting up 8, 9, 10 DK, sub 5,000. I love it. And then finally, for just a pure punt. And truly pure punt. Like if he gets five DK, fantastic. But just given the texture of the slate, I think midfield is where you might want to punt off. Ashley Westwood, 3,600, taking half the sets for Burnley. He does a little, get you a little defensive peripherals. Um, you know, look, it's sub 4,000. We can't get too picky. Down there, you also have Will Hughes, um, home to Chelsea with no Connor Gallagher. He could also be interesting. 
So I do think you're probably going to punt off one spot. Jakob Motor is not on this list, but another guy I'm looking at. Um, surprisingly good logs, given the fact that he's not been taking sets, but just taking some shots, fouls, drawn, tackles, those type of things. Look for those type of guys to fill it out and hopefully put it all together for a great week. I really do hope this helps. If it did, make sure you like, subscribe, comment. All those really help. Any questions, try to reach out to me at PeterGuy231 on Twitter. Yes, I pointed the wrong way. The lovely world of recording. So um, reach out to me there. Would love to help any way I can. Um, typically, if you try to message a few people have during a lock, I'm looking out uh, for the subscribers at our site during that time in our chat room, um, answering questions there. But you know, night before, way early in the morning, I'll try to get to those. Thank you all once again so much for watching and the support. With that, I'll say, see you.